James Prescott, Jewel FRS, was an English physicist and brewer, born in Salford, Lancashire. Jewel studied the nature of heat, and discovered its relationship to mechanical work. This led to the law of conservation of energy, which led to the development of the first law of thermodynamics. The SI-derived unit of energy, the Joule, is named after James Joule. He worked with Lord Kelvin to develop the absolute scale of temperature, the Kelvin. Joule also made observations of magnetostriction, and he found the relationship between the current through a resistor and the heat dissipated, which is now called Joule's first law. Early years The son of a wealthy brewer Jewell was tutored as a young man by the famous scientist John Dalton and was strongly influenced by chemist William Henry and Manchester engineers Peter Ewart and Eaton Hodgkinson. He was fascinated by electricity, and he and his brother experimented by giving electric shocks to each other and to the family's servants. As an adult, Jewell managed the brewery. Science was merely a serious hobby. Sometime around 1840, he started to investigate the feasibility of replacing the brewery's steam engines with the newly invented electric motor. His first scientific papers on the subject were contributed to William Sturgeon's Annals of Electricity, motivated in part by a businessman's desire to quantify the economics of the choice, and in part by his scientific inquisitiveness. He set out to determine which prime mover was more efficient. He discovered Joule's first law in 1841, that the heat which is evolved by the proper action of any voltaic current is proportional to the square of the intensity of that current, multiplied by the resistance to conduction which it experiences. Joule captured the output of the alternative methods in terms of a common standard, the ability to raise one pound, the height of one foot the foot-pound. However, Joule's interest diverted from the narrow financial question to that of how much work could be extracted from a given source, leading him to speculate about the convertibility of energy. In 1843 he published results of experiments showing that the heating effect he had quantified in 1841 was due to generation of heat in the conductor, and not its transfer from another part of the equipment. This was a direct challenge to the caloric theory which held that heat could neither be created or destroyed. Caloric theory had dominated thinking in the science of heat since introduced by Antoine Lavoisier in 1783. Lavoisier's prestige and the practical success of Sadi Carnot's caloric theory of the heat engine since 1824 ensured that the young duel, working outside either academia or the engineering profession, had a difficult road ahead. Supporters of the caloric theory readily pointed to the symmetry of the Peltier-Seebeck effect to claim that heat and current were convertible in an, at least approximately, reversible process, the mechanical equivalent of heat. Further experiments and measurements with his electric motor led Joule to estimate the mechanical equivalent of heat as 838 feet lbf of work to raise the temperature of a pound of water by 1 degree Fahrenheit. He announced his results at a meeting of the chemical section of the British Association for the Advancement of Science in Cork in August 1843 and was met by silence. Joule was undaunted and started to seek a purely mechanical demonstration of the conversion of work into heat. By forcing water through a perforated cylinder, he could measure the slight viscous heating of the fluid. He obtained a mechanical equivalent of 770 feet lbf BTU. The fact that the values obtained both by electrical and purely mechanical means were in agreement to at least one order of magnitude was, to dual, compelling evidence of the reality of the convertibility of work into heat. Wherever mechanical force is expended, an exact equivalent of heat is always obtained. J.P. Joule, August, 1843 Joule now tried a third route. He measured the heat generated against the work done in compressing a gas. He obtained a mechanical equivalent of 798 feet lbf BTU. In many ways, this experiment offered the easiest target for Joule's critics but Joule disposed of the anticipated objections by clever experimentation. 
Jewell read his paper to the Royal Society on 20 June 1844, however, his paper was rejected for publishing by the Royal Society and he had to be content with publishing in the Philosophical Magazine in 1845. In the paper he was forthright in his rejection of the caloric reasoning of Carnot and Émile Clapeyron, but his theological motivations also became evident. I conceive that this theory is opposed to the recognized principles of philosophy because it leads to the conclusion that vis viva may be destroyed by an improper disposition of the apparatus. Thus Mr. Clapeyron draws the inference that the temperature of the fire being 1000 degrees Celsius to 2000 degrees Celsius higher than that of the boiler there is an enormous Loss of his viva in the passage of the heat from the furnace to the boiler, believing that the power to destroy belongs to the Creator alone I, affirm, that any theory which, when carried out, demands the annihilation of force, is necessarily erroneous. Duell here adopts the language of his viva, possibly because Hodgkinson had read a review of Ewitz on the measure of moving force to the Literary and Philosophical Society in April 1844. Jewell wrote in his 1844 paper, The mechanical power exerted in turning a magneto-electric machine is converted into the heat evolved by the passage of the currents of induction through its coils, and, on the other hand, that the motive power of the electromagnetic engine is obtained at the expense of the heat due to the chemical reactions of the battery by which it is worked. In June 1845, Jewell read his paper on the mechanical equivalent of heat to the British Association meeting in Cambridge. In this work, he reported his best-known experiment, involving the use of a falling weight, in which gravity does the mechanical work, to spin the paddle wheel in an insulated barrel of water which increased the temperature. He now estimated a mechanical equivalent of 819 feet lbf BTU. He wrote a letter to the Philosophical Magazine, published in September 1845 describing his experiment. In 1850, Joule published a refined measurement of 772.692 feet lbf BTU, closer to 20th century estimates, reception and priority. For the controversy over priority with Mayer, see mechanical equivalent of heat. Priority much of the initial resistance to Joule's work stemmed from its dependence upon extremely precise measurements. He claimed to be able to measure temperatures to within one two hundredth of a degree Fahrenheit. Such precision was certainly uncommon in contemporary experimental physics but his doubters may have neglected his experience in the art of brewing, and his access to its practical technologies. He was also ably supported by scientific instrument maker John Benjamin Dancer. Joule's experiments complemented the theoretical work of Rudolf Clausius, who was considered by some to be the co-inventor of the energy concept. Joule was proposing a kinetic theory of heat, and this required a conceptual leap. If heat was a form of molecular motion, why didn't the motion of the molecules gradually die out? Joule's ideas required one to believe that the collisions of molecules were perfectly elastic. We should also remember that the very existence of atoms and molecules was not widely accepted for another 50 years. Although it may be hard today to understand the allure of the caloric theory, at the time it seemed to have some clear advantages. Carnot's successful theory of heat engines had also been based on the caloric assumption, and only later was it proved by Lord Kelvin that Carnot's mathematics were equally valid without assuming a caloric fluid. However, in Germany, Hermann Helmholtz became aware both of Joule's work and the similar 1842 work of Julius Robert von Mayer, though both men had been neglected since their respective publications. Helmholtz's definitive 1847 declaration of the conservation of energy credited in both. 
Also in 1847, another of Joule's presentations at the British Association in Oxford was attended by George Gabriel Stokes, Michael Faraday, and the precocious and maverick William Thomson, later to become Lord Kelvin, who had just been appointed Professor of Natural Philosophy at the University of Glasgow. Stokes was inclined to be a Jewelite, and Faraday was much struck with it, though he harboured doubts. Thomson was intrigued but sceptical, unanticipated. Thomson and Jewell met later that year in Chamonix. Jewell married Amelia Grimes on 18 August and the couple went on honeymoon. Marital enthusiasm notwithstanding, Jewell and Thomson arranged to attempt an experiment a few days later to measure the temperature difference between the top and bottom of the cascade, the Salanches waterfall, though this subsequently proved impractical. Though Thomson felt that Jewell's results demanded theoretical explanation, he retreated into a spirit of defense of the Carnot Clapet Ron school. In his 1848 account of absolute temperature, Thomson wrote that the conversion of heat into mechanical effect is probably impossible, certainly undiscovered, but a footnote signaled his first doubts about the caloric theory, referring to Jewell's very remarkable discoveries. Surprisingly, Thomson did not send Jewell a copy of his paper, but when Jewell eventually read it he wrote to Thomson on 6 October, claiming that his studies had demonstrated conversion of heat into work but that he was planning further experiments. Thomson replied on the 27th, revealing that he was planning his own experiments and hoping for a reconciliation of their two views, though Thomson conducted no new experiments. Over the next two years he became increasingly dissatisfied with Carnot's theory and convinced of Joule's. In his 1851 paper, Thomson was willing to go no further than a compromise and declared, the whole theory of the motive power of heat is founded on, two propositions, due respectively to Joule, and to Carnot and Clausus. As soon as Joule read the paper he wrote to Thomson with his comments and questions. Thus began a fruitful, though largely epistolary, collaboration between the two men, Jewell conducting experiments, Thomson analyzing the results and suggesting further experiments. The collaboration lasted from 1852 to 1856, its discoveries including the Jewell thomson effect, and the published results did much to bring about general acceptance of Jewell's work and the kinetic theory. Kinetic theory Kinetics is the science of motion. Jewell was a pupil of Dalton and it is no surprise that he had learned a firm belief in the atomic theory, even though there were many scientists of his time who were still skeptical. He had also been one of the few people receptive to the neglected work of John Herapath on the kinetic theory of gases. He was further profoundly influenced by Peter Hewitt's 1813 paper on the measure of moving force. Jewell perceived the relationship between his discoveries and the kinetic theory of heat. His laboratory notebooks reveal that he believed heat to be a form of rotational, rather than translational motion. Jewell could not resist finding antecedents of his views in Francis Bacon, Sir Isaac Newton, John Locke, Benjamin Thompson and Sir Humphrey Davy, though such views are justified. Jewell went on to estimate a value for the mechanical equivalent of heat of 1034 foot-pound from Rumford's publications. Some modern writers have criticized this approach on the grounds that Rumford's experiments in no way represented systematic quantitative measurements. In one of his personal notes, Jewell contends that Mayer's measurement was no more accurate than Rumford's perhaps in the hope that Mayer had not anticipated his own work. Jewell has been attributed with explaining the green flash phenomenon in a letter to the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society in 1869. Actually, he just noted the last glimpse as bluish-green. Honours
Jewell died at home in Sale and is buried in Brooklyn's cemetery there. The gravestone is inscribed with the number 772.55, his climacteric 1878 measurement of the mechanical equivalent of heat, in which he found that this amount of foot-pounds of work must be expended at sea level to raise the temperature of one pound of water from 60 to 61 f. There is also a quotation from the Gospel of John, I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. The Weather Spoons public house in Sale, the town of his death, is named after him, the J. P. Jewell. The family brewery still lives on but now located in Market Drayton. Fellow of the Royal Society, a royal medal, for his paper on the mechanical equivalent of heat. Printed in the Philosophical Transactions for 1850, Copley Medal, for his experimental researches on the dynamical theory of heat. President of Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society. President of the British Association for the Advancement of Science. Honorary Membership of the Institution of Engineers and Shipbuilders in Scotland. Honorary Degrees. UL, D, Trinity College Dublin, DCL, University of Oxford, UL, D, University of Edinburgh. He received a civil list pension of £200 per annum in 1878 for services to science. Albert Medal of the Royal Society of Arts, for having established, after most laborious research, the true relation between heat electricity and mechanical work, thus affording to the engineer a sure guide in the application of science to industrial pursuits. There is a memorial to Jewell in the North Choir Isle of Westminster Abbey, though he is not buried there, contrary to what some biographies state. A statue by Alfred Gilbert stands in Manchester Town Hall, opposite that of Dalton. Selected Writings Jewell, J.P. The Scientific Papers of James Prescott Jewell, London, Physical Society.